hi, I'm Amanda. I'm from the Animal Welfare League in Queen Anne's County in Queenstown. Today I brought with me an adaptable dog and a couple of my own dogs to demonstrate some training tips. And we're going to talk about the five main things you need to know when you're training your dog. Chef is a six-year-old Pomeranian mix. He has been at the shelter for about two weeks. He likes yogurt and fish sticks. He's very good with kids and other dogs. Um, if anybody is interested in Shep or any of the dogs we have, I encourage you to come down to the Animal Welfare League in Queenstown and adopt a dog today. Today I brought with me five dog training tips that you can do at home, important things to keep in mind when you are working with your dog. First thing that I, you need to know is you have to get your dog's attention. It is impossible to talk to somebody who's not listening to you. You know you have your dog's attention when your dog is looking at you. So you do not want to continue to give commands to your dog if your dog is not looking at you. So I encourage you to sit at home with some Cheerios or some popcorn or some dog training treats and just call your dog's name and get your dog to look at you. As soon as they look at you, you want a reward that continues to remind your dog that he needs to listen to you. So I usually tell people to do the action first before you introduce the word out of your mouth. Otherwise, the dog becomes desensitized to the language and is not going to pay attention to you. Um, the other thing that we want to do, again, is to get the dog to follow the motivation and see if Sophie's motivated by cheese to lay down. Sophie, Sophie, sit down. The second important thing about training a dog is to know what motivates your dog. For most of us, it's food. Uh, sometimes it might be a special toy or a big hug, but for most dogs, it's food. You want to make a trail mix bag of little tiny bite-sized pieces that are soft. Get a variety of things, which always keeps your dog wondering what he's going to get next. Keep this treat bag with you or in different rooms wherever your dog might be doing the behavior that you're looking for so you can immediately treat your dog. So she's followed the cheese and then as soon as the action is what I want, she gets the reward. An important thing about dog training is you have two seconds to reward or punish the dog for the action. So you really have to be right in there with the treats in order to reward as soon as the action happens. Um, and that's, that's a key point. Um, that's not a lot of time if you think about it. Um, what I always tell people in my classes is if you let your dog to go outside, your dog walks around the grass, piddles on the grass, smells some bushes, chases a butterfly, comes back inside, and you give him a treat. He in no way understands that he's getting rewarded for piddling outside and not inside. He's been rewarded for sitting in front of you. So really keep in mind what is going on in the two seconds before you give your dog the treat. Crate training. Crate training is okay. Dogs are den creatures. And we want to use that crate to keep the dog safe and your house safe during the training process. All dogs can go into the crate as long as you make sure the crate is a reward and it's never used as a punishment. And the other rule about crate training is your dog needs to be quiet before he comes out of the crate. If you remove a barking dog, you are teaching the dog to sit in the crate and bark, which is not what you want. So use the crate training to keep him in a quiet, small, safe place Dogs will not use the bathroom in their crate, so it's an excellent potty training tool. Kate has been taught to shake. Here you go. Whenever I teach a dog to shake, I put the food in the palm of my hand and close it. Um, by the nature of the dog, they will paw at my wrist to try and get the treat out. As soon as they lift the paw, of course, the dog is treated, and they learn to shake, and that's a really fun thing to teach a dog. Um, you can also, if you can get the paw up high enough, you can teach them to high five. Kate will sit for me. Kate, will you sit? Sit. Um, she's sitting because, again, she's motivated for the food. I'm putting the food over her head. And as she's watching the food, the weight of her body takes her downward, and she's learning to sit. I don't introduce the language until she's got the action completely correctly, so there's no, um, no confusion in her world. But this then becomes the action of uh-uh. This then becomes the action of sit and she knows she can get a treat for doing that. And lastly, for our big dogs, I highly recommend a gentle leader. Um, you can get these at any pet shop. It is a lead that attaches over the dog's snout 
and the collar it goes around the neck with the uh, lead attaching under the dog's snout. This takes all the pressure and control off of the dog's neck, which is generally the strongest part, and it allows them to have control only from their snout, which prevents a lot of pulling and jumping when you're taking a walk. It makes the walk so much easier. So those are the five tips that I brought with you today. At Animal Welfare League, we're continually offering canine camp training classes, and I encourage anybody to come down to the center and sign up for them.